Mutual intelligibility is when languages have enough in common with one another that speakers of each language are able to communicate with one another to varying degrees of success. I've always found this incredible. We often think of languages as somewhat closed systems, a group of speakers who can use one language and can't interact with another group of speakers. This really isn't the case however. Many languages have a shared history of origin with one another, coming from the same forebear language, or having interacted with another language for so long, words and terms have become intermixed between the two. This has led to many languages having way more in common than you might think. Take Spanish and Portuguese, or even English and German. People who speak Spanish and don't know Portuguese might understand more words in the language than they realise. Likewise, many English and German words are pretty similar to one another. Yet, some of the languages most renowned for their mutual intelligibility are not a pair, but instead a trio. Those being the Scandinavian languages of Swedish, Norwegian, and Danish. These three languages are shockingly similar similar to one another, sharing many similar words, phrases, and grammar rules. Take their word for dog, hund. This is the same in all three languages, minus some pronunciation difference between them, but we'll cover that down the line. Even some whole phrases sound alike. Take the Swedish phrase of hej padig, which translates to mean hello to you. In Norwegian, this is hej padang, and in Danish hej madig. On top of this, they all have the same word order too, all going subject, verb, object. This means that if you can speak Swedish, then you'll be able to get by pretty easily in Norwegian and Danish too. And if you can't speak any of them, then any one of these languages could be a pretty good one to learn, as acquiring one of them kind of gives you free for the price of one. And the best place to learn either Swedish, Norwegian, or Danish has to be Babbel, the sponsor of today's video. Now, I need to be honest with you all. Despite talking about words and language so much, I actually suck at learning them. I always struggled in school language classes, and I've tried many other apps and programs to no avail. Babbel, however, is really resonating with me. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world, and I fully understand why. Babbel is created by 200 plus real language teachers, and their app is super user friendly, and the lessons are really accessible, starting with basic words and working up to more complex ideas. I, of course, wanted to use it to learn a Scandinavian language, and of the three, I picked Swedish. And while Norwegian and Danish are here too, Babbel actually has 14 different languages to choose from overall. What I've enjoyed most about the language learning experience with Babbel is just how relaxed it is. There's no pressure in how much you use it or how much you learn. You set your own goals and how much you want to study each day. On top of that, it gets you stuck straight in with the words you want to know. The app asks you why you want to learn that language and accommodates you from there. I wanted to learn some useful everyday Swedish and from the get-go, I was learning their words for hello, hej, welcome, velkommen, and thanks. Tack. And from here, the course dives into much more advanced stuff, like asking questions in the language. I feel I'm going to be on my way to learning Swedish in no time, and by extension some Norwegian and Danish too. After years of trying other language learning methods, I'm hoping Babbel is going to be the one for me, and it could help you learn a new language too. Start speaking a new language of your choice within 3 weeks and get 60% off your subscription, as well as access to an amazing discount on their lifetime subscription for Memorial Day by clicking my link down below. Thank you once again to Babbel for sponsoring today's video, and once again, check out my link down below for 60% off your subscription and access to their amazing lifetime subscription discount for Memorial Day. Uh, anyway, there's a lot to unpack in all of this. First off, what even is Scandinavia and why does it only apply to these three countries slash languages? There are other nations out there that often fall under the Scandi umbrella, but technically are not part of this trio. To be considered a Scandi country, you have to meet two criteria. You must be in the same geographic area and speak a language from the same origin. These three fit this bill, so they get to be in this fun little group. And this is why other countries like Iceland and Finland aren't part of that group. Iceland speaks a language from the same origin, but is far away geographically, and while Finland is right next to them, their language of Finnish is from a different origin entirely. Don't feel too bad for them being excluded however, as these two, the Scandinavians and some others are all grouped together under the term of the Nordic countries. So what exactly is it that binds the languages of Swedish, Norwegian and Danish? It's the fact they are all descendants of the language we call Old Norse. Old Norse is the quintessential Scandi language of the past, the language of Vikings, and originally written in runes which now look so mysterious to us. Of course I doubt it was called Old Norse 
Norse when it was being widely spoken. That would have been odd. In the Middle Ages, it was known as the Danish tongue, or Dansk Tonga, maybe because Denmark was the first of these nations to gain significant power on the world stage, so the language became most linked with them. And while Old Norse is old by its very nature, it was actually the product of an older language known as Proto-Norse. Proto-Norse emerged in around the 1st century AD in the land of Scandinavia as an offshoot of Proto-Germanic. Proto-Norse developed into Old Norse in around the 8th century AD. Old Norse will not only make itself at home in Scandinavia, but all across Europe. Its key speakers, the Vikings, travelled the continent far and wide, bringing their language with them. This is why the influence of Old Norse can be heard in languages like English and even Russian. At points, it was the most spoken language in Europe. The widespread use of Old Norse, however, came to an end for a variety of reasons, mainly because other people taking power where Old Norse once dominated, like William's claim of Britain in 1066, supplanting it with French influence. While Old Norse stopped being spoken on the grander European stage, it stuck around in Scandinavia, and in the 9th century AD, before the wider fall of Old Norse, it started to form into the languages we know today. The Old Norse speakers who resided on the peninsula north of modern Germany became the Danish, the ones who lived in the central region of the land above them became the Swedish, and those who lived on the western coast of this landmass became the Norwegians. Today, these three languages, which are the children of Old Norse, make up the North Germanic language family, a branch of the larger Germanic language family, which in turn is a part of the huge Indo-European language family. Yet these three are the only languages which make up the North Germanic branch of this family. There's also Icelandic, as already mentioned, and Faroese spoken on the Faroe Islands. There was also a language called Norn, which was spoken on the now Scottish islands of Orkney and Shetland. It became extinct however in 1850 when its last speaker died. Yet despite these two also being North Germanic slash descendants of Old Norse, they are nowhere near as similar to the three we are talking about. This is mainly because of the geographic distance of these places, as well as their island nature, meaning they could evolve in relative isolation, or not evolve in the case of Icelandic. Yeah, modern Icelandic is incredibly similar to Old Icelandic. Many Icelandic speakers can read Old Icelandic texts with relative ease. Try getting a modern English speaker to read Old English for comparison. But why don't we go back to the actual similarities between those three languages of Swedish, Norwegian, and Danish, which this video is supposed to actually be about. When it comes to mutual intelligibility between languages, we often compare just two languages when we look for similarities between them. This, however, isn't the case here. As we're dealing with three languages, we have to look how each different pairing of these three languages work and how compatible they are, and this can vary in many ways between the three of them. Often, these languages are compared to siblings, the eldest of them being Swedish. This is because Swedish, after the three of them, has the most speakers, and is perhaps the country most linked with Scandinavia. The middle child is seen as Norwegian. This is due to the fact that in some ways, it is kind of seen as a middle ground between the two of them, and has a mutual understanding of its older and younger sibling. This of course means that Danish is the youngest child, something of a rebel the grown-ups don't understand, especially its oldest sibling of Swedish. So let's compare Swedish and Danish, the oldest and youngest sibling. These two are similar, as siblings tend to be, but they are far from identical. Many of the words in these languages are spelt slightly differently and pronounced slightly differently. There are comparisons online of Swedish speakers saying Danish speakers speak as if they are drunk or have a potato in their mouth. This implies that to a Swedish speaker, Danish might sound like someone trying to talk Swedish in a highly slurred kind of way. Take both languages' words for badger. While they look fairly similar, they aren't spelt in the exact same way, nor are they pronounced in the exact same way, with the Swedish word being gravling and the Danish word being graling. While these differences aren't huge, in the context of Scandinavian languages, they are quite far apart. How well Swedish speakers and Danish speakers can understand each other, however, can vary too depending on where they are from. Swedes who live closer to Denmark are probably going to be able to understand Danish better than Swedes who live in the nations far north. The sibling comparison seems apt here. The youngest and oldest sibling can often be born years apart, sometimes being from completely different generations. It's understandable why they might seem so different to one another. Thankfully, however, to bridge the gap between these two, we have Norwegian. Norwegian is seen as the middle child for this reason, as it has similarities between the two of them, meaning it can communicate to some degree far better than Swedish and Danish can on their own. Take Norwegian when compared to Danish. Once again, Norwegians can often feel that Danish people are slurred in their talking, and that's 
because the two languages also have pretty different pronunciations. However, they have a huge amount of similarities in their written form. Many Norwegian and Danish words are spelt the same way, but pronounced differently. Take their word for Monday. As you can see, they are spelt the exact same way, but they are pronounced differently. The Norwegian one is pronounced Mandag, while the Danish one is pronounced Menda. Because of this, I read that it makes more sense for Norwegians and Danes to communicate with one another over text, as opposed to actually talking to one another. The reason Norwegian and Danish have such similar spellings comes from the fact that between the 14th and 19th century, Norway belonged to Denmark. Danish was the written language of Norway, so the spellings kind of merged. Bokmal, one of Norway's two writing systems which was adopted post-Danish rule, is actually heavily influenced by written Danish. On the opposite end of this spectrum, we have Swedish and Norwegian, which if you couldn't guess, sound similar to one another, but many of their words are not spelt the same. Take both their words for train, tog. They sound the same but are spelt slightly differently. In Swedish, it is T-A-G, while in Norwegian, it is T-O-G. This similarity in pronunciation but lack of similarity in spelling comes from the geographic closeness of Sweden and Norway, sharing a key border with one another. Yet the spelling doesn't match up because, as mentioned, Danish had more influence over the spelling of the written Norwegian language. It all feels like a bit of a rock, paper, scissors scenario, or like Pokemon type compatibility. But in summary, Swedish and Danish contain different spellings and different pronunciations, Norwegian and Danish contain similar spellings and different pronunciations, and Swedish and Norwegian contain different spellings but similar pronunciations. And when I say different pronunciations and different spellings, those differences are only marginal in many cases. Make no mistake, these are three languages that are highly similar and mutually intelligible for one another, that being thanks to their shared history, with them all deriving from that same language of Old Norse. The last question we need to ask is which one would be best to learn? Well, they all have their ups. Swedish is the most spoken of the three, Danish could prove the most challenging, and Norwegian is a good middle ground between the two of them. And of course, you can learn Swedish, Norwegian or Danish by using Babbel by clicking my link down below and getting 60% off your subscription and once again, that amazing lifetime subscription discount for Memorial Day. Thank you once again to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. Name Explained depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explained videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explained or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.